So, my dear friends, guess what we have for way number 42? And this was not pre-planned. Way number 40. So I'm not a genius. It's the Almighty's help. He's helping us. He loves what we're doing here. So, way number 42 is Ma'amido al Hashalom. To, to fight for peace. It's an interesting choice of fight for peace. Not to let a quarrel just, you know, brush things or push things away. You're going to have to stand up and fight to make peace. I know it's an interesting choice of words, right? But you have to go and pursue it. And like we mentioned just a few minutes ago in our Musa Monday class about peace, way number 42, our sages tell us, if you want to maximize pleasure in life, make peace a priority in your life. Now, Rabbi Noah Weinberg would say that if someone doesn't know what he's living for, then he's at war with himself. You're in a constant struggle. There's another phrase that he used to say so beautifully. Rabbi Weinberg, I heard him probably say it a hundred times. He would say, if you don't know what you're living for, sorry, if you don't know what you're ready to die for, you haven't begun living. If you don't know what you're ready to die for, you haven't begun living. Think about it. What are people ready to die for? I'm ready to die for my family. So why don't you live for your family? Are you ready to die for your job? For your career? So why do people live for their job? Are you ready to die for your car? People live for their car. Are you ready to die for golf? We, we had decided in our, in our group uh, over the weekend that golf is an official religion. <laughs> for some people. For it's some an official people religion. It is for my husband. It, it's a religion. Oh, God. Are people ready to die for golf? Not. Hopefully not. But you know what? Sometimes people live for golf. Yeah. So why do they live for golf if they're not ready to die for it? So Rabbi Weinberg would say, if you don't know what you're ready to die for, you haven't begun living. Because you're taking from yourself the opportunity to live for that thing. But over here when we're talking about peace, you've got to pursue peace. We said we need to be like the students of Aaron. Love peace is not enough. Pursue peace. You know what people always say, you know what, it's not my issue. Let them have their fight, I'm staying out of it. That's not someone who loves peace. That's someone who loves themselves. Someone who loves peace, pursues peace. I want to share with you one story, and with that, we'll end for tonight. I'll dismiss you. Davida, it's already late by you, it's almost 10 o'clock. She's from New York, she's watching. It's an amazing story. It's one of the most touching stories I've ever heard. Rabbi Yaakovson, who lived in Be'er Yaakov, a little village near Rehovot, where my father grew up, he was a man of true peace. And he knew that there was a quarrel between two members of his community. They didn't talk to them, and they didn't talk to them. And who knows? Who knows? how long this quarrel has been going for. A feud. Now, there was a tragedy that happened to Rabbi Yaakovzon, and one of his grandchildren was a stillborn. His daughter gave birth to a stillborn baby. So you have to still have a funeral, and you still have to bury the baby. So, he picks up the phone, and he calls one of those families that were in the feud, and he says to them, you know, there's a tragedy in my family. I need you to come to my house immediately. Of course, the rabbi calls. Tragedy, we're coming right away. He calls the other family that was in that feud. And he calls them and says, you know, there was a tragedy in my family. We're about to have a funeral. I need you to come immediately to my house. These two guys show up at the front door. They're like, the rabbi probably just doesn't realize that we don't talk and that we have nothing to do with each other and that I have no sympathy for this person. The rabbi walks out with the lifeless baby in his hands and he stands in front of both of them and he says, this baby in a few short minutes is being returned to his creator. 
is going to have his funeral and is going to be buried. He didn't merit to one mitzvah his entire life. He hasn't had one mitzvah. I want the two of you to make peace. And that be his mitzvah. That he came to this world for a purpose. To make peace between the two of you. I want the two of you to make peace. And that be his merit. And they made peace. That is Ohev Shalom, the road of Shalom. It's not enough to love peace. You have to pursue peace. At a time of such terrible tragedy, of such pain, what's the only thing Rabbi Yaakovson can think of? How do I make peace in the world? How does this become a merit for this little baby? Hashem should bless us that we should always be people who have peace, people who love peace, people who pursue peace, and people who have peace throughout our entire lives. Amen. Thank you and good night. Amen. That's good.